To talk about all of this, we've got a power panel on deck. Eric Jackson still with me of EMJ Capital. Will McDonough of Corestone Capital to talk about the EV landscape. And Ivana De La Vesca of Spear Invest, who's a shareholder in NVIDIA. Uh, as we await Rivian, those numbers still not out yet. But Will, I want to start with you because this is a, a stock that you're a little bit cautious on, even as you're pretty excited about EVs in general. For sure. I think, you know, Rivian's probably public prematurely. And so when investors look at their results today, I don't think they're going to be pretty. I think it's, is it bad or is it really bad? But really, that shouldn't matter. If you're a Rivian investor, you're looking out long term on whether or not they're going to be a major player in the EV game five, ten years out. Are they going to be the Ford of the future? And so you have to make a call on if they're going to be able to compete with the Fords and the GMs of the world. World, let alone Tesla. I think that they do benefit a little bit from that retreat that you reference with Ford and Hertz saying that they're cooling their jets on how fast they're driving adoption. But at the end of the day, the numbers are not going to be pretty. And if you're a public company investor trading off quarterly data, buckle up. If you're a long-term investor betting on EV adoption, I think it's a safer play, but you have to zoom out and look at it in that manner. How, Eric, what do you think about that, about Rivian and whether um, it's just not really kind of the right fit, shouldn't be public and might not be able to compete in this landscape? For sure, they, they've um, all of EV is basically a no-touch area these days. <laughs> it's, it's, it's uh, you know, I own Lucid as well, and they're reporting this afternoon. And um, I think that the, the reason why I still hang in there and still own a piece of Rivian and Lucid is that it is so bearish right now in EV land that, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, that that's a sign of a bottom. I think where Rivian and Lucid have an advantage is that the bigger players, whether it's GM or Ford, I mean, they can't really go guns blazing into EV and spend money, um, you know, building up their own de internal development. So I think it's a more natural thing for them to look for a partnership with one of these two names. Now, you know, uh, if and if something like that happened uh, and the cost benefit was there for for the big player uh, and and you know, the revenues was going to be there for a Rivian or a, a Lucid, that's the kind of thing that could send one of these names up a huge amount. I will say Lucid right now is down. It's down about 4% in the pre-market as revenue missed expectations, 157 million versus the estimated 178. Their loss was a little bit wider. Um, they see production of about 9,000 vehicles for this year. So still kind of on the smaller end in terms of meeting, meeting the demand. Are you deterred by a uh, I know I just gave you three numbers, but what do you think? <laughs> I, I think the most important thing for both names, Rivian and Lucid, is going to be on the call. What what kind of language do they give to um, yeah. you know uh, costs you know going forward and spend going forward? Is Rivian going to going to cut back its planned rollout of its George, planned Georgia facility, for example? And and so and, and it gives some hints towards potential partnerships. Will, last question to you: uh, Where does this leave Tesla in the mix? It is still struggling here, especially in the context of the Magnificent Seven. I think Tesla's in a powerful position for the same reasons why I think Rivian's interesting. Tesla is a pure EV play, but they also have many other lines of revenue and business that are accretive. Uh, I think that when you look out at how Tesla is building their manufacturing capabilities, they're building it such that they are the most prime for a partnership with a major OEM. They're building their chassis, they're building their manufacturing lines in a way where you might see Tesla batteries in Ford cars in the future. You might see Tesla mainframes utilized, uh, you know, with Rivian headlights on, on the body. And so I think Tesla is most set up to benefit from this duress. All right.